How are we doing guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I've just jumped in the M5, which I've got for the day. So yeah, just before I get into the review a bit later on, I thought I'd just give you my first impression, um, what I think. But yeah, I mean, just feels super luxurious in here. First thing that I feel on my back is the seat, which feels really, really comfy, really wide. Yeah, and the things look rather good, don't they? Um, virtual cockpit, full virtual cockpit, we would expect that. I do like the colour of this interior as well. Uh, Bowers and Wilkins sound system, so that should be good. That's an upgrade, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, probably give her a start. See how she sounds. So I'm going to get onto driving this, put some fuel in it, um, go somewhere nice, somewhere a bit scenic and um, yeah, get into this review. So um, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. So I've got it in all the sport settings right now. So um, M1 is set to Sport Plus all the way through for the steering, the way it revs, the suspension. And I mean, it's a mighty car. So the first M5 to be four wheel drive, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, there was a lot of controversy as to that decision. Um, even I was thinking myself that, yeah, we might lose uh, what the BMWs are about, but that clearly wasn't the case. The car has definitely come out as a great, great product of BMW. And one of the main things to know is that you get uh, the best of both. You don't lose the sort of rear wheel drive package that you get, you can just switch it between four and two, which is absolutely brilliant. So you've got obviously a full four wheel drive, which is a 50-50 bias, um, not a rear wheel bias system but you can switch it to a four wheel drive sport which gives you a bit more less traction and you've got a bit of slip at the back and then you've got MDM and you've got a complete um, no wheel drive system. It's a really, really wicked stuff there that you, they've, they've managed to put that technology in. When you see it in this car and its main rival, the E63S with its 4Matic Plus system where it can have a completely rear wheel driven mode. We've got a really high quality cabin. There's leather literally on the dash, literally everywhere. So yeah, a really premium feeling cabin. The steering wheel is actually a really good size. Thickness of the, the wheel isn't, isn't bad at all. The seats are just absolutely amazing. Best seats I've definitely sat in um, in any car. No discomfort over the time I've sat in them and I could just see myself driving literally miles and miles being very, very comfortable and not having any sort of issues. So. Yeah, re really good stuff there and it just shows that the M5, that's part of the M5's personality, isn't it? That it's a big, big GT super saloon that can literally take you cross country without any any issues and without batting any sort of eyelid. And this car deserves a nice light interior like this one has because I'm not a fan of black interior. I think it's a bit boring, to be honest with you, especially in a car like this, um, where the seats are definitely like a, you know, a big part of the how beautiful it looks um, yeah so I would want them in a nice light color Bowers and Wilkin sound system which is an upgrade a really nice clarity there really doesn't have any issues with sound in, in terms of baseline or any type of music I've played all sorts of types of music just to test it out super cool car man really fucking fast whoa this car's on the Pirelli P0 so Hasn't got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which is the go-to tire, of course. We'll definitely gain some more grip if you add it to this car, but yeah, it would be a good sort of enhancement if you want to gain some more grip and, and just enhance it in that in that respect. If you're pushing the car on its limit, you definitely would want the 
a Pilot Sport 4S tyre, which I guess you could definitely get at some point in ownership because you're going to have, yeah, it's a maintenance slash upgrade. Yeah, so I mean, we're down some really nice country roads now. It's absolutely beautiful where I am right now. Definitely moves really nicely for a big car. Definitely feel the mass, uh, which is close to two tons. It's a big old car around town, but it does move very, very nicely for that size. You don't, it still has that tightness. It doesn't feel loose, like you can get the steering in a nice tight setting in Sport Plus and suspension and everything. Um, as you can see, it is in Sport Plus now, so you're gonna see the camera wobble a bit um, because it is rather stiff. Speaking of horses, yeah, we've got 600 of them in here. 750 newton meters of torque. Just a shit ton of power, isn't it? Can't use that on the public road, but yeah, feel that grunt and that beastie V8 just raring to go. <laughs> like this pillar um, I know it's probably super insulated and, and makes the cabin quiet but it's massive like it really creates a massive blind spot which is a pain in the ass to be honest with you another thing is the Apple CarPlay so I've got ways open here on the screen um, and it doesn't go across the whole screen it's it's a bit stupid you get in, it's going three quarters of the way across and it's like So things I really like about this car, I would say, are the comfort. And that's one of the, you know, main sort of pros of going for something like an M5, right? You get the power side, but you also remain with a super comfortable car. A cross-country car, GT car, ultimate super saloon. Cars come with the carbon roof, a standard. You get an aluminium bonnet and front wings. Uh, so keeping the weight off there and obviously the center of gravity low the most closest rival the um, e63 amg has the pan roof i mean there's no carbon roof action honestly guys i could just drive in this car all day it's just a treat to drive i've just put it back into comfort definitely eased up a bit more stuff on the road really nice like yeah not, not nothing yeah just just doing what what it's also good at aside from being an absolute monster um, it just can cruise along the road really well and just be, you know, a normal 5 Series. Yeah, honestly, they do really need to make an estate version of this. I honestly think they'll sell like hotcakes because there's definitely, there's got to be a market out there for it. I don't know if the reason why they don't bother is because Audi have it covered, um, you know, with the RS6, RS4. I don't know, but I mean, there could be something there because we have the new M3 coming out next year in, in a estate version so maybe we could see this in in an estate version too but yeah in terms of value so this car new was about 88 grand 89 grand with no options a pretty expensive car a couple of years on now coming up to three years this car with a pretty low mileage maybe around 10 to 20 thousand maybe 30 thousand you could be around 55 60 marks from bmw approved with a one to two year warranty uh, so that's where values are at the moment yeah we may not see prices go down as quickly as normal due to the chip shortage we've seen a rise in supercars and all cars in general the used the new market there's been a slight rise in prices 
So something to think about there in terms of, yeah, how long would that last? I don't know if you guys know much about that. If you do, drop something in the comments. An interesting conversation, I think. Yeah, so the exterior colour is like a sort of a black, but not like a sort of jet black, it's quite light. A decent colour. Um, for me personally, I would like, I think there's some really wicked colours you can get in this. Um, you've obviously got the San Marino Blue, which is one of the best colours I think BMW have on offer. Um, there's also the Snapper Rock Blue, which I think is beautiful. I definitely think with this interior, either of those colours will really set it off. There's like a sort of maroon colour, a sort of dark red with, um, which is, it's like matte or satin. Yeah, it looks really nice. People take these to a thousand brake horsepower. It's just mental. Like it's actually crazy because this feels crazy. Like, scary amount of power. Yeah, it's just mental, man. Mental stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't be taking it on track. I do need to get into that soon and just start taking these kind of cars on track and see what they're really about because you can't really push it too much on the public road. That will be something for the near future. But yeah, I, I was just going to say that this car is most definitely going to be something wicked on track. It moves very well for its size, um, even though we know it's a two-ton, two-ton car. So the M5 is obviously considered to be the best, the best, you know, super saloon that you can get for a long, long time. Up until the new E63 came out and the S was just performing super, super well. This car, does a great job of what it can you know do all around and the ability it has the e63s as i said is meant to be you know what on par or even a slightly better car maybe Watch in the looks out. department the and on the road ahead. you know um, what it can do in general in some performance aspects as well to be fair this has always been the m5's realm and it's always been everything's compared to the M5. Can it be as good as the M5? The M5 has always been the best, the best in this class by a long shot. But finally, other cars have caught up, and you know the E63s is now is now as good. So still praise for the M5. I think we need to go to sports, guys. M2. is absolutely mental like it's super super aggressive when it wants to be um, you're just hunting people down <laughs> um, yeah super pleasurable I would love to take this car to the Nürburgring I know that is a, one of the baddest tracks in Europe but even just taking it to there's tons of sick tracks in the UK so yeah not even the Nürburgring let's go Silverstone let's go Brands Hatch even that sick track in Wales that Chris Harris always goes to, can't remember the name of it. I would love to go there, man. Like, just taking cars like this there would be absolutely wicked. Yeah, so the interior's got a really nice feel to it. Um, I know it's going on a couple of years now, it's 2018, but it still feels really up to date in 2021. I don't really see anything else I would need in addition to what this has. It's got heated seats, all that jazz. I mean, that's not the latest technology, but wireless charging, virtual cockpit, um, a really nice, see looks up to date in it, it doesn't look dated. Yeah, so this car hasn't got the ceramics, which is obviously super desirable and quite an expensive option. It still does have, it has the normal brakes, but they do feel good. It's got like gesture controls and stuff that you can do this kind of action and, um, you know, move tracks and turn the volume up. Which is a bit gimmicky in some ways, but pretty cool at the same time. Just cruising along the motorway really nicely, which feels great. And that's what this kind of car is all about, right? Being practical and doing everything really really well and I really do love the feel of this car I've been sitting in these seats for hours and really really comfy 
yeah man I can't praise them enough it's definitely a car that I would love to have it really ticks a lot of boxes for me because uh, I do want something that's practical but at the same time can perform I like it and it keeps going on me if you are considering this car I guess you're looking at maybe an RS6 which has the benefit of coming as an estate which is a massive plus also you've got the E63 which does come in an estate as well as a saloon so yeah they do have the upside there but another car which is as good as if you want to go a bit less in terms of spending and power is the BMW M340 and I think that is worth a mention because that comes in both a saloon and an estate and it is a really really epic car I did really enjoy it when I reviewed it recently so if you would like to check that out um, yeah I'll add a link below this video so you can check it out and I'll add one somewhere on this video i hope you guys did enjoy the video uh, please do like the video if you did do subscribe click that um, button and the bell icon if, if you want to get notifications about the videos um, but yeah i've got more to come and yeah no let me know your thoughts in the comments any cars you want to see yeah let me know uh, just just write whatever you feel man like anything just just yeah just, i'll definitely reply um, if you have any questions or yeah, about the car or any questions in general Thanks for watching and take care, see ya.